you got dollars while making you laugh When it comes to money, don't be slackers Listen to Garley and Susan Susan and Garley Garley and Susan, they're the fiscal firecrackers Yeah, yeah, yeah Take it, ladies Boom, taking it Oh, that gets me going Woo. That's the right right song isn't it it is it is so good it's good it's so good so this is a show about money as you know galia and yesterday i was spending some money having coffee with a friend at starbucks and i did my order and she said you know you are your starbucks order and i said really and she said what did you just order and i said skinny vanilla latte (laughs) tall extra hot lawsuit hot (laughs) No, no. And then I start start thinking about it. So I'm wondering, what is your Starbucks order? Okay, so I am, I'm two. Well, no, I'm three. So if I'm in a cheap mode, which sometimes I am, Uh (laughs) I do the Misto, which is regular coffee. So it's just a Misto with almond milk. So what you're doing is you're kind of getting the latte, but you're getting it for a cheaper price. What a great tip. It is a great tip. So your times, you have actually a... A money-saving coffee, which is so you. So it is you. And I, I'll take it even a step further. <laughs> so first I do the Misto. So I get their hot coffee. Because I think their brewed coffee is so delicious. And it's like espresso type. But I get it with the steamed milk. So it's like a fake latte. Mm. But I'm paying $3 instead of four fifty. Or if I'm really cheap and I'm really in a rush, <laughs> which I am both those things, I say, just give me a grande black coffee and I tell them but put it in a venti cup because I like a lot of room for milk and then I go on the side and fill up a lot of milk so I get a large venti coffee for the price of a grande you're smart lady so yes I guess I am my Starbucks order you are which is you're already saving right you're you're fiscally smart in your Starbucks order and I didn't mean to flatter myself by saying (laughs) lawsuit hot but I do actually request my drinks lawsuit hot because I want to burn my face off I want that much heat in my... I don't like these coffees that are half milk, half ice, half... uh, No, just pure, hot, dark coffee, burn my tongue off, take my teeth out. But what leads me to what goes well with coffee is Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. It is Girl Scout cookie season. Please help me, Galia, because how do I say no to those precious, sweet faces? I I have so many boxes... Um, do you have a favorite Girl Scout yes, cookie box? Yes, of course. Box thin mints. What do you like? Thin mints. Come on. Is there anything better than a thin mint? Um, yes, there is. It's called Samoas. I knew you were going to say is, it. I knew you were going to say the Samoas. Mm-mm. The Samoas are a crisp cookie with caramel, coconut, and dark chocolatey stripes. Yes, please. I have them right here on my desk <laughs> because they're just such a great office snack. But here's the thing. How do you say no to people? Because this, again, we're we're talking money here. I don't know. I get these emails. Hey, I'm running in a 10K in uh, San Diego. Can you sponsor me? Or, hey, I'm selling Girl Scout cookies. Or, hey, there's this thing for this great charity. Or, hey, I I don't know how to say no. I don't. I don't want to say no to anybody. That's a great question, Susan. So, And I've actually been asked this question many times. So I would say, let's take a step back. And you, as the CEO of your family needs to decide how much do we want to contribute to charities this year and come up with a dollar amount. Is it $5, $50, $100, $1,000? But you make that decision right now at the beginning of the year, what do I want to contribute? And then you can decide how we're going to split it up. So these, you can say, okay, well, here's the few charities that I love. And then Mm -hmm. I have this much left over for all those others that people are like, oh, what about this? What about this? Okay, well, that's about $25 per. So you know that when somebody asks you, you're like, you know what? I've got $25 per ask. So you've kind of Mm -hmm. planned ahead of time and there's no wonderment from that standpoint. Okay. Is that what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I do Mm -hmm. that. So I say for the year, I'd like to donate this. This is what I can afford. This is what I need for my tax deductions since we are talking about taxes today. The other thing that I've done is I've set up a charitable trust through Fidelity And again, you can do this for a small amount of money. Charitable trust does not mean wealthy. It just means that I've put some money away 
in a trust. And again, it does. You don't have to have a lot of money for it. It sounds so Hampton. Let me go <laughs> and let me talk to Bubbles in the library about the charitable trust. Pull me a martini. No, no, no. It's really That's- just a way to save on taxes because I put an investment in there, so I didn't have to pay taxes on this investment, and I can only now use that money for donations. And so that money is in there just for donations. And again, it's a small amount, but the idea is that money is in a separate account in my brokerage account in Fidelity. It's literally called the Fidelity Charitable Trust. And I know that that money is just for donating to charity. And for Girl Scout cookies as well. It is, it is. And what I would prefer instead of Girl Scout cookies, because listen, I like nothing better than a thin mint crumbled on vanilla ice cream. That's exactly how I eat it. Or from the freezer, you freeze them, they're great. Yeah, yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. I do love that also. But what I would actually rather do is support the Girl Scouts and sponsor a workshop for their girls' leadership. That's what I've done instead. Great idea. Mm -hmm. So teach them how to negotiate, teach them how to start their own business. On that note, everybody, I'm Susan Yeagley. And I'm Galia Gishan. And we are the Fiscal Firecrackers. And this is the show where we have a complete blast while learning to make our money last. We will educate, entertain, and empower you with your money. And I'm so excited about the topic of today's show. Taxes. We are talking about taxes, and we are going to make taxes sexy. That's right. You heard me. We are going to make taxes sexy. Look how sexy this is. Look, I've got my (laughs) Statue of Liberty. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. That is pretty darn sexy. I I went to a costume shop and I got a Statue of Liberty hat. Maybe you can tell me offline what you're going to do with that later. Yes. (laughs) Lady Liberty's here, you guys. Well, listen, taxes, they're not going anywhere. They're a part of our life, but let's make them sexy. Let's figure out how to get more money back, how to implement them in your life on a daily basis, regular basis, and more importantly, feel in control so you can go make more money. Do you remember, Golly, the first time you paid taxes, what you were making, what job you had, how old you were? I don't think I paid taxes in high school. I had a job pretty much as soon as I was allowed to work. I did. But I don't think I paid taxes because I probably gave my paycheck to my dad who had a CPA and he said, you make too little to file taxes. Mm -hmm. So I remember doing my first set of taxes. And this is actually, if I'm thinking about this correctly, I'd gotten my first job and I'm actually going to refer to them today. I love the company TurboTax. Uh Uh-huh. And... I must have ordered the CDs and they came and I put the CDs on my computer, the program, and did my taxes that way. I actually remember doing that in my 20s. You were that smart to understand how to do your own taxes? Well, no, I was probably cheap and didn't want to pay somebody. (laughs) (laughs) And believe it or not, even back then, it was very user-friendly, I'm telling you. And I'm not really scared of finance and taxes. I actually studied accounting as an undergrad. So I do really understand the basics of accounting. And I know that I was cheap and I didn't want to pay someone, which I don't do that anymore. I do pay a good CPA. But at the time I was like, well, I don't want to pay somebody a hundred dollars. I can do it myself. And I figured, let me just at least try and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I might've, I think even before that done just the 1040 easy form, which was just a one page paper form in the back of the tax return. And it was like that really, really thin onion skin paper that Uh you got at the post office. So I probably did that too, if I'm remembering that correctly. I'm impressed. I've always gone to someone, even when I made so little, I mean, the first time I remember was going to this guy in Santa Monica and he looked at what I was making and he said, are you okay? (laughs) Are you, do you, can I get you a sandwich? <laughs> he wanted to feed me. And I was like, you know me, I was all sunshine. And, Woo, I'm doing fine. I got a call back for a Swiffer commercial on Wednesday. Things are going to look up for me. You don't worry about me. You don't worry about me. Oh he really goes, you're going to be, are you going to be okay? Did you walk in like he, all emaciated? Like you hadn't eaten in weeks or no, something? <laughs> just happy and like, look, every year I make a little bit more money, don't I, Lewis? I make a little bit more money. I'm doing better, better than last year. And he just, I, I, he felt really bad for me, but I loved the idea of going to a place. I loved going to a professional again. This is not something I do, um, even when I didn't have much money at all. And I, I do appreciate going to a professional. I definitely suggest that to a lot of my freelancers. So the first part is where should you even begin? Who does your taxes? So let's just lay out the groundwork for you. So there's really, I would say three ways 
So the first is to go to a CPA, to go to an accountant. And there is a difference between an accountant and a CPA. CPA is actually, they've taken the exam, the certified professional accountant. And I would say that if you had to choose, go to a CPA. An accountant is great, but they don't have the CPA certification. And you're not going to pay that much more. So go to a CPA versus just an accountant. I had no clue there was a difference. Well, an accountant means that they have an accounting degree, but if they don't have the CPA, they haven't passed the exam. Well, I thought it was garbanzo beans and chickpeas. It's all the same in the salad. I know. It's a, I know. But it's, they're actually different. Yeah. And, and I've, I don't want to throw regular accountants under the bus who don't have the CPA because there are some really good ones, but it's just that much harder to get the CPA. And so, you know, if you're going to work on my money, I kind of want that certification. So you can do that. Now, if you have a very simple money situation, meaning that you get a paycheck from one person, you don't own a home, you don't have a lot of expenses, you could easily do it on your own. So that's even like the 1040 easy form, which you can still get at the post office and you could just do one page. And that's super, super easy. I've done it. I've worked with people. The third, which is really what I recommend for so many people is using a software. Mm -hmm. I'm such a fan. There are some that are free and I'll give you a few free ones. And we're going to also put this on our website, fiscalfirecrackers.com under the dollars and cents. But there are so many great softwares that do cost a little bit. It's still cheaper than going to an accountant. So there's TurboTax, which is kind of like the grandmom or the granddad of tax prep. There's Lily, a new tool that lets you do your taxes on one app, which is fantastic. There's Tax Act. There's 1040.com. There's Cash.app. There's Credit Karma Tax, Tax Slayer. So I'm giving you a whole list of them. And I've checked them all out. They're all pretty good. Some of them just estimate a tax refund. Some of them them just estimate your taxes. And some actually give you a tax software to file. And don't forget that if you're in a state that has state taxes, that's a separate tax return. And don't forget if you're in New York City, you have a third tax return, which is the city tax return. Holy cow. Mm Mm-hmm. What would you say is the biggest mistake we all make regarding our taxes? So I'm going to actually give you three mistakes. Three. So the first is getting organized, I would say is the biggest mistake. And there's lots of ways to get organized. So especially if you're a freelancer, getting organized for your taxes should be a regular habit. It really should be something that you're doing every week, every month. And this is really just using a software like Quicken or Lily again, that really keeps track of your expenses, because then you can just keep track of your expenses and have your deductions. And that's the easiest way to do taxes. So number one, getting organized, go digital. It's 2022. But if you want to do paper, I'm actually a fan of like putting a beautiful file folder on your desk, or a beautiful plastic containers and fun colors like the brand Poppin or Etsy, or even going to Amazon, like make it beautiful, bring that beauty into your life that when you get a receipt or when you get a tax bill, put that somewhere. So you're organized about it. Light a tax candle and have a steak while you're doing this, right? (laughs) A steak. Okay. Just don't do that on meatless Monday, right? That's right. (laughs) Have a tofu burger, mushroom. (laughs) Light a candle. I like that. I like that. Are you one of those people who has like a candle on your desk while you're oh, working? Oh, in every room. <laughs> every room of the house. It's ugh. it's like a candle store at our house. I just love candles. People give me candles because I'm not a big drinker. So if they come to my house, they'll give me a candle. I just love, I love them. What's your um, funniest candle? Wait, wait. Are you, did you buy the, that That smells like that my smells vagina? Like, yes, exactly. Yeah, I've got that one. <laughs> How how close is it? I think mine smells better. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. First of all, how did you smell it? Well, how I know is I put a wick in it and I lit it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's your tip. Light the vagina candle while you're doing your taxes. <laughs> All right. Now, what's the funniest candle you've got? Gosh, I've got I've got so many. I mean, I love the spring rain, the the smells that smell like you just not too heavy, but like you just got out of the shower. I also have a Christmas candle that smells like a log cabin, a crackly fire, hot cocoa log cabin. I also have something called beach that smells like you're on the beach with 
Hawaiian Tropic and salt and uh, it just, I've got a whole, whatever mood I'm in, I light the appropriate candle. Okay. So I need to get a tax candle. You do. You do. All right. And the other mistake that I see is people don't take into account their deductions. And so here's your next tip is really understanding deductions. And it took me a while to understand. So number one, you have itemized versus standard. Okay. And I would say that most of us are standard. So that means the standard deduction number that you want to kind of understand is if you're a single taxpayer, so you're not married, is 12550 And it's more if you're married. It's 25000 if you're married. So the idea is that you have to incur expenses that would be more than $12,000 for you to go to itemized deductions versus standard. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. So then what are those expenses? So I'm just going to give you a laundry list, but again, they're going to be on the website. So if you can incur expenses more than this, then you should itemize your deductions. And again, that's why being organized. That's everything. It, it's so much of it. Talk about being organized. This would be a really great time to tell you about an incredible app. Freelancers. Are you ready to stop wasting fees on your business account? Let me tell you about Lily. It's a new way of banking for freelancers and single business owners. Separate your personal and business expenses with just a swipe. Left for personal, right for business. You'll optimize your taxes, you'll save money, and reduce financial stress. In just three minutes, you can join the more than half a million freelancers who've already opened a Lily account. No minimum balance, no hidden fees, no impact on your credit score. Sole proprietors and single member LLC are eligible. Finally, take control of your taxes and spend that newfound time making more money. Sign up today for a special Lily offer on our website, fiscalfirecrackers.com. And now back to those deductions. All right, let's finish talking about deductions. So I'm going to give you just a quick, long list of deductions. Again, they're going to be on our website, but check them out. If you think that you have these deductions, then you should really consider itemizing versus standard. So the first is investments. If you have investments that are in a taxable account, and if you have any losses, you can sell them at a loss, and that's a deduction. If you contribute money to your 401k and IRA, SEP, HSA, that's a tax deduction. If you donate money to a charity, and I don't mean that old coat in the closet, I'm talking about actually give green money. If you own a home, your mortgage interest. If you pay property taxes, if you pay city and or state taxes, if you have a lot of medical expenses, and I don't mean your medical insurance, but actually medical expenses. If you have gambling losses. Woohoo! That's surprising. Yes. So if I go to Vegas and let's say I lose $1,000, I can write that off. So I don't, don't quote me on the dollar amount, but yes, you can write off. I know. And I'm sure there's a cap on it because otherwise that would be a tax loophole. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm going this weekend. (laughs) I know. I'll be going with my my vagina candle. and (laughs) So another thing you can do that might not be an immediate tax deduction, but it's kind of a good thing to do anyway, is clean out your closet because that's a great non- cash charitable contribution, especially if you have kids and you want to donate their old clothing and their toys to a place that you can actually get a tax receipt, or if you want to clean out your closet, or if you want to clean out furniture. And I don't mean write it off because you put it on the side of the road. I mean, you actually have to give it to a place that gives you a tax receipt. Mm -hmm. You're going to actually feel lighter and have less stuff. Now don't go buying new stuff to replace it. Leave your closet empty for a little bit just for a little bit. Feel how good that empty space feels. And especially when you do your taxes in TurboTax or your CPA or the other apps we suggested says, oh, did you donate? Do you have non-cash charitable contributions? You say, yes, I do. And it all adds up, believe me. I was just thinking about how we were looking at what my husband spent on clothing last year. It was $11. No, are you joking? Right around there. It just, really? He just, yeah, it's not his thing. What about for work? Like, doesn't he need... He he's, can wear the same shirts he's used forever and the same jeans he's had forever and the same shoes. And when he's drawing all day, he can wear his sweatpants. So yeah, he's really low maintenance. Now, if you buy him clothing, does he mm-hmm. get upset? Does he like it? Does he... 
Oh, he's really, he says, thank you. He says, thank you so much. And then he'll wear the shirt that he's had since 1984. But it's sweet. It's sweet. Yeah. Wow. Does he like a hat? Is he a sneakers guy? He would, if he got, if you had to make him, he just doesn't spend much. But I would say he would love a a new banjo. If you gave him a banjo, he'd be really happy. So musical instruments or guitar or banjo would really make his eyes light up. Yeah. How many banjos does he have? It's a, he's a lot of musical instruments. Wow. Yeah. And doing my research here about deductions and tax refunds, what's interesting is the average American tax refund is two thousand three hundred and six dollars. Mm-hmm. That's a lot, and it's going up every year. Two thousand twenty-one was the highest tax refund year ever, and it's not because of inflation. Mm-hmm. That's that's amazing. I was thinking. I mean, I don't think I get refunds these days, but back when I used to, I would take that money as soon as I got it. I'd pay for acting classes in the valley, headshots, and then we would all go to eat at this place called the Snake Pit and get nachos and margaritas at the Mm. Snake Pit after a show on Sunday nights at the Groundlings. So that's, I would blow my refund on stuff to further my career, which actually isn't really blowing it. No, Um, it kind of sounds like um, Beverly Hills 9210. Remember they used to go to the Peach Pit? The Peach Pit, yeah. This (laughs) was the Snake Pit. (laughs) Yes. What about you? What do you do with your refund? So that's so funny. So first of all, you might be getting a refund, like, and a refund means that you overpaid. So for example, I tend to overpay a little bit. And what my CPA does is says, do you want to just apply that towards your next year taxes? Roll it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you might be getting a refund, but your CPA, very often they do do that. So here's the thing is that refunds are sexy. And you know why? Money back is sexy. So there's, here's your tip. If you think you're getting a lot of money back, file your taxes as soon as possible because the government is holding your money interest-free. Don't let them hold it interest-free. You take it back and do something with it that it really helps your life. And we're going to give you some tips around that. So the idea is that if you think that you're getting more than $50, $500, file your tax return ASAP. Get that money back and make it work for you. What I used to do with my refund for many years when I first started working and I was living in New York City as a single gal... I was just craving a vacation. I was craving like just getting out of the city and I didn't necessarily have that much money, but I wanted to buy a beach share either in like Fire Island or the Jersey Shore or the Hamptons. And I would buy these quarter shares where I would like sleep like six people to a room, but it would get me out to the Hamptons. (laughs) Never even heard of this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You would buy a a Hampton share. share. A A Hampton Hampton share. share. So it'd be like 20 or 30 people in a house per weekend. It was a huge house. It was like six or 10 bedroom house. Um, And it was all just like people in their 20s and 30s. Oh, yeah, it was huge. In fact, they used to have Hampton parties in the spring where you'd go to a bar and you're like, well, I like those people or I don't like those people. And you'd like shop around if you wanted to and or if you wanted to get invited to like a cooler Hampton share. Oh, my gosh. I feel like this is such a fertile a- area for hookup, right? Like, didn't you meet people at the share? And oh, boy, somebody's not talking now. Anyway, back to taxes. I love that we both spent our tax refunds in joyful, fun ways, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I do remember that fondly. And again, like we've talked about, I was listening to some of our conversations. And what do I like to spend my money on? And for me, it's travel and memories. Like I've, you know, I'm planning vacation in April. We have such a fun vacation plan, by the way. Oh my gosh. So here's some other fun. I, and where sexy- are you going? I have to ask that. <laughs> I can't just let that go. We're going somewhere really great. Where are you going? It is. Okay. So we're doing a few things. So it started with that. I've been to the Grand Canyon, but I really wanted to like hike it. So REI does these women only trips. And so we're doing Whoa. four days of hiking and camping in the Grand Canyon. And it's like a women only guided camping trip. Wow. I just keep thinking the Brady Bunch episode where they go down. Yes. Or did I dream that? Don't they go down no, in no. donkeys? Yes, yeah. yes. No, uh-huh. we're not doing donkeys. We're uh-huh. camping out. So you just, and I've done these REI trips. They're really great. You basically just show up with your sleeping bag and your clothing and they do everything else. They do the campsites. They do the food. You have guides. They're really, I did it with my family. Um, it's a really great way to kind of, we did it in Zion National Park and Bryce and Utah. What about snakes? Do you have an issue about like, rattlesnakes? Because we found a rattlesnake in our backyard. I could not have called the realtor f- quick enough. I was like, let get me out of this house. There was one in our backyard. Woo. 
you know what? You can always go sleep in a nice hotel room bed. Like, it's just nice to get away for a few days. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live like that per se or mm-hmm. have every vacation, but don't worry because after the camping trip, I'm, I already have the really nice hotel book <laughs> after that. And then we're going to start out though. My girlfriend's always wanted to see the flowers in Death Valley. Like apparently they Ooh. bloom once a, you know, a few times a year, they have a month and it's just going to be that week that we're going. So we're going to fly in go see the flowers in Death Valley and then go back to the Grand Canyon, hike for four days. And then we actually are flying in and out of Vegas because that's the best way and spend the last two nights in Vegas. At a- and write off your gambling losses. Exactly. <laughs> so here's some other fun and sexy ways to spend your tax refund. So the first, because this is who I am, is be practical. If you have any debt, consumer debt, just pay it off. Come on. Yep. Don't think about it. Pay it off. And at the same time, put a little bit extra in your emergency savings, just a little, just to cushion it. And then I was thinking about this, and let's also think about ways to make you wealthier and think about wealth no matter where you are. So there's two thoughts I had is maybe you can create some passive income through real estate, Ooh. or maybe this is the time that you fund your business. Maybe you want to make jewelry on Etsy or, or take a course to learn something. Take that course, spend that money, use that tax refund to really build yourself and build wealth. The other thing that I'm really hearing about, which I love, and this doesn't cost a lot, is is like pay it forward, like buy coffee for that person at Starbucks behind you. Or, you know, if you're going through a toll, pay that person. I'm probably not even paying tolls anymore. You just do it all through the easy pass. But if you're buying something like just randomly act of kindness, buying something, do that with your tax refund. I think if that's that floats your boat, that can be really fulfilling. That can change someone's day their whole week to oh have something so kind and so randomly done. It's so dear and t- tender and nice. It means a lot. And it's done anonymously. Like yeah. there's a power in that where they don't know that you did that. And by the way, what is it going to cost you? $5, $6? And if you do the cheap Galia coffee, it costs you three fifty. <laughs> That's right. But ask for it lawsuit hot, please. Yes, lawsuit hot. <laughs> okay. We've got a letter here, Miss Galia. Um, okay. Love your letters, please. Keep them coming. Want more pecuniary pleasure? Let's read a letter. FiscalFirecrackers.com. Go there. There's a place to click and you can send us a letter and we are so excited to hear it. Here we go. Dear Fiscal Firecrackers, I just got my tax refund and I want to make this money work for me. I keep hearing about real estate as an investment. What do you think? I love the idea of real estate investment. Love it, love it, love it. So here's my advice that if this is something you want to do, So first of all, if you don't own your own home, but you want to get into that, don't think of your first home as an investment because most people don't necessarily make money on their first home. Really? Well, it's interesting. It's a place that we need to live. We might pay a little bit more because we want to be in a better school district. So from an investment standpoint, it might not be the place that we make the most amount of money. But if you want to create passive income, there's a few ways to think about it. So number one is if you are going to buy a home, think about buying a multifamily property. So maybe it's a home that has two homes in it or an apartment building where you can live in one of the apartments. Or I have a client who's actually just bought a home in Brooklyn where she's renting out the basement apartment. So it's something that gets you your home, but then you can also rent some of it out and either get your whole mortgage paid or it's a way to bring in some extra income to make your mortgage lower. So that's a great first step. The second is if you're going to look at a home as an investment or passive real estate is do something where you know the area. Like don't, if you're living in New York and someone says, oh, I have an apartment building to buy in North Carolina that you've never been or don't know, like that's not a great idea. So for me that I looked at buying real estate as an investment, and I started right around my backyard. So right around the corner from my house where I lived or the apartment where I lived. So I knew the area and I was like, oh, that's a terrible area or that's a great area that has a lot of foot traffic. Oh, that's an up and coming area. Like you're never going to be able to buy that intelligence. So start with what you know. Right. Places that you've visited. And even if your tax refund or if the money you're saving isn't that much, just put it away for the down payment for the investment. And then really do your homework. So when you're starting to look as an investment, look at 50, 60 properties. It won't take you that long. You can look at eight or 10 a day. And at the same time, look at properties for rental. So again, you get a really firsthand roll up your sleeves feel as to what these rentals look like, what they cost. 
Like what is that $1,000 a month rental versus the $5,000 a month rental? Can you really tell the difference? So then you can really gauge how much you should be charging for rent. That's brilliant. You know, one of the biggest takeaways today, Galia, has been for me to learn how important it is to be organized. That is such an important part of life, not only with our taxes, but just generally speaking, I grew up with a mother who was so organized. She would, every Sunday night, lay out in a pile her Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday clothes for the office with her blouse, her pants, and the jewelry on top, the bra and panties on top of that, that was going to be with every outfit. And I remember to this day, I can still see going into her bedroom and seeing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because she said, life is short. I don't want to spend it in my closet trying to find clothes. So everything was done for the entire week. And that way she got up in the morning, had her coffee, and it's time to put on Wednesday's panties. Mm -hmm. You know, she had everything Mm -hmm. set to go. (laughs) And Wednesday's jewelry that goes with Mm -hmm. that blouse, right? To this day, I try to do that. You know, it's Jen Hatmaker talked about the evening Jen taking care of the morning Jen. And Mm -hmm. I try to say, okay, evening Susan needs to be organized to take care of morning Susan. So that means get the coffee pot filled up, make my son's lunch, have the oatmeal ready to go. Um, And it comes, you know, it's true when it comes to taxes. We've got to be the the same, same way. So I've actually learned that from you that nighttime Galia takes care of morning Galia. Now I make the coffee at night and I set my vitamins out at night. So I've learned that it's a fantastic habit. And I got it from Jen Hatmaker who talked about it because it's, it just makes your morning sing. It's so well, wonderful I just, to wake I up. I give you credit. So I'll just give oh, well, Susan credit. And at okay. night when I'm making my coffee and I said, this is, you know, Galia nighttime Susan. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, it's a great tip and I'll take that tip a step further. Cause that's what I do. I would say that look at your money on a weekly basis and really carve out that 15, 20 minutes a week that you can focus on your money. Mm-hmm. Have a money date with yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And always do one thing for the long term. So in this case is taxes. So for example, getting organized could just be, let me using a software. And even if you're a freelancer, if you are a freelancer, think of yourself as a CEO and say, I'm going to take myself seriously and professionally and use some sort of business software that I can really look at my expenses and itemize my deductions. God, that's so important, Galia, that we should all think of ourselves as CEOs. Mm -hmm. We are a business. Yes, absolutely. No matter what, if you're a nurse, a school teacher, a business person, if you're making sandwiches at Subway, you are a business. You are paying taxes. Mm -hmm. You are a business. Turn the lights on in the room. Turn Mm -hmm. the lights on and and take care of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you don't think like that, you can't expect other people to treat you like that, right? It's big. Okay, let's go over all of our tips for today. We had so many tips. Yes. And they're all on our website. So if you can't find them, fiscalfirecrackers.com. Open your ears and a money market account. It's time for Galia's Dollars and Cents. All right, where do you begin? Who does your taxes? Go to a CPA, do them the 1040 easy form, or use a software. So many great softwares, TurboTax, Lily, Credit Karma Tax. Again, they're listed on our site. Refunds are sexy. Money back is sexy. If you're filing that refund, file that return as soon as possible. Don't let the government hold your money interest free. Think about deductions, really itemized versus standard and understanding really what are my expenses? Do I have expenses that qualify that maybe I can itemize my taxes and get more money back? And again, the sooner you do it, the sooner you get your money back. Clean out your closet. It's a great tax deduction. And it's also just like a good spiritual thing to do. Think of fun, sexy ways to spend your tax refund. So pay off debt, put money into savings, invest in yourself, buying real estate, starting a business, and also just treat somebody special, pay it forward. Getting organized. So obviously digitally is the easiest way, using something like Quicken or Lily or another expense scanning app, or just go to the container store or pop in or buy a beautiful envelope or box. Like the other day I was on Wayfair. I love that site. They have beautiful ways to get organized. Um, also, if you are a freelancer and you get a lot of W-2s, 1099, Schedule K-1s, start talking to all those people in your life and say, can you get those to me as soon as possible? I love it. Those are some great tips. Golly, once again, I learned so much today about taxes and about the importance of being organized. And yes, I can write off my losses at Blackjack. So that is good to know. So Susan, I have a quick question for you. Did we make taxes sexy? Uh, Smoldering. 
we make taxes very, very See, sexy. See, we, we, we could do it. We could make taxes sexy, right? We can do it. We can do it. And we're going to now come up with our own candle. Get that <laughs> <Yes>. out there. <laughs> we are. All right. Thanks, everybody. Go to our website, fiscalfirecrackers.com. Subscribe, rate, and review. And please tell three friends. Thank you for listening to our podcast, The Fiscal Firecrackers. While this podcast contains information about finances and investments, financial results discussed herein are not necessarily typical and are not a guarantee of future success. The creators of this podcast make no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. The podcast should not be considered professional advice and is not a substitute for a financial planner or investment banker. Please seek professional guidance and do your own research before investing. You know what? That was just one take.